Hello everybody, in this video I want to do something different and go over the 5 obscure and underused features of Inkscape that are super useful and you may have missed. But before that, I make Inkscape and illustration videos, mostly tutorials, pretty much every week, so if you're interested make sure to subscribe and hit the bell. Also don't forget to like and comment this video, it helps the channel a lot and it's always highly appreciated. And this first feature, I think is essential to work efficiently. If you follow my tutorials, you know I'm a big fan of using it. And that is pasting the style. You can copy the style properties of one object and apply it to another one with a different shape. This object will receive the style properties of the other object, but keep their shape. First you copy the object you want to get the style. You can do this using Ctrl and C. And then you paste the style by selecting a different object and go into Edit, Paste, Style, or using the shortcut Ctrl Shift B. Now it's important to understand what does style means for Inkshape, and the answer is pretty much anything that shows up on the fill and stroke dialog. Of course, the colors for both the fill and stroke, and this includes the other options that are not solid fill, like gradients, patterns, and even nothing. Then there are the other values that you set in the Stroke Style tab, including Width, Dashes, Markers, Joins, Caps, and even the Stroke Order. And you can paste even the Blur and Opacity values. Let's look at some real-life examples. I found that this feature is most useful when you want to quickly give a difficult to set style to a bunch of objects. Here I have this character with these shadow shapes drawn, and I want to give them the color of the shadow which will use an alpha value. It will be a pain to go in and copy the exact color and alpha for every single shadow shape. Well, with this tool, we can make a single shadow that has the color and alpha we want, and then select all the other objects that are supposed to be shadows and paste the style. This is also super useful if you want to mess around with the color and alpha of the shadows. It just takes a minute to go in and paste the new style to all the other shadows. So commit the shortcut to memory, Control shift b and it will save you a ton of time. Let's talk about clones, because they can be a super useful tool for illustration, and I see nobody talking about that. Clones are copies that share the geometry data of an object, meaning that all changes you do on the original object will affect all of its clones. To make a clone, you can go to Edit, Clone, Create Clone, or use the shortcut Alt-D. The clones themselves cannot be modified, you cannot change the nodes in any way or change the color, or use it for any other path operation. However, you can modify them with the object tool, scaling it, rotating it, and use pretty much any other operation from the tool controls of the object tool. But here comes the interesting part. There is also another set of tools you can use with the clones, the path effects, and that changes everything. Just in case you haven't wrapped your head around the use of this tool quite yet, the power shows when you want to create an object that's heavily repeated all throughout an illustration, and you want to be able to modify one version and the changes to propagate to all the other copies. In this example, I have this fence, and I want to make some bars. I made this master copy, which I'm gonna clone using Alt and D, and then position around. Remember that we can still change the scale and rotation of each clone with no problem. I think it looks okay now. There's enough variation and it looks fine. But let's say that we want to change the shape of the bar, maybe making it look a bit more aggressive. All we have to do is to go back to the original one, change the design, and that's it. All copies will receive these changes, while also maintaining the transformations and path effects modifications we made. And one last thing. Remember that at any time we can break the link with the original, allowing you to modify a cloned version as much as you want. Though of course, then any change that you do to the original will not be reflected on this particular copy. I'm sure that by now your mind is racing with possible uses for this tool. I leave the experimentation to you, that's always the fun part. Here is a quick one, but essential when making certain type of illustrations. You can select objects automatically in your document based on different criteria. If you go to Edit, in the Selection section, you'll see quite a few selection options. You can select everything in one layer or invert the selection, 
quite useful. However, the one option I want to go over is in the submenu Select Theme. Here you can select based on the type of objects, the stroke and fill color, and even the stroke style. So here's an example where this becomes extremely useful. In this character, I use the technique I like to use when doing art with line art, of doing the line art first and then filling it with the bucket tool. So the line and fill are completely different objects. If we want to select all the lines or maybe all the fill, we will have to go one by one, selecting every single object, and you probably know how much of a pain it is to select the strokes in Inkshape. We can use the Select Same option by going to Select Same, Stroke Color, to select all the strokes, for example. Because all the strokes have the same default black color, only the strokes will be automatically selected. The same for the fill. Select Same, Fill Color. And only the fill objects will be selected. This little selection feature can save you hours and hours of just selecting everything manually, one by one. This is especially useful if you want to go and try different colors and different styles, where you will need to select everything over and over again. Certainly worth keeping in mind. This one is more like a tip. I didn't know about this feature up until recently, and I really wish I had known about it earlier. Inkscape is kinda slow at rendering complex stuff. You should know that by now. The moment you start making, say, a background or anything that's made out of a ton of objects, the entire document starts to lag. How much it lags depends on the particular of your hardware and even the operative system you're using, but even then, Inkscape is just slow in general. You can always turn the display mode to outline, that's an option, but I kinda hate it because when you have a ton of objects, it's really hard to decipher what's going on, kinda muting the point of using it. The Make Bitmap Copy creates a duplicate of an object or groups of objects, but this duplicate is a bitmap image instead of a vector object. It's like a super quick render of whatever you copied, but made in the program on the spot. Here is a quick example of how to use it. In this composition, there are a ton of objects, the background is completed, and now I want to keep drawing right on top, but it's starting to get slow and it's annoying to work. Well, no problem, select everything and go to Edit, Make Bitmap Copy. This will create a single image file containing everything else. Now if you want, you can go and hide the original objects, but because they are being obscured by this new image, that means the program no longer has to calculate every time you move the camera, and it works perfectly fast. This is a nice little tool to keep in mind, and the moment the program starts to lag when you have too many objects. Here is a feature that's super underused, but that can be really interesting to build up a nice library of reusable assets. When you go to the fill and stroke dialog to pick a color, you should have noticed that you can not just apply a solid color or gradient to a fill or stroke, you can also apply patterns. Patterns are shapes that get repeated all throughout a design area of an object, usually the fill, without its position being attached to the object itself. If this is confusing, it will become clear in a moment when I show you an example. If you want to use a pattern, in the fill and stroke dialog, just select this button. You'll see a ton of pre-made patterns, don't worry, we'll be making our own in a minute. For now, let's explore a second how they work, because it is super interesting. Once you select a pattern, you notice that when you move the object, the pattern does not move. It's like when you apply the pattern, you're getting a window into another object, as if you were moving a clip over another shape. The same when you scale the object with the object tool. It looks like the pattern is getting squashed, but when you release, the pattern readjusts to the way it should be. What's more, even when you go in and modify the shape with another tool, the pattern stays still and covers the whole area. Right below the pattern window in the fill and stroke dialog, you have some options to control the scale and rotation, position, and gap of the pattern. What's more, if you click on the Edit on Canvas button, or just click with another tool, you can edit the properties with the handles on the canvas itself. Some patterns even allows you to change the color. Okay, that's interesting, but you may be thinking, how do I create my own pattern? Well, it's super easy. First you draw whatever you want on the canvas. 
It can be made out of a single object or made out of multiple objects, can have multiple groups, have a path effect, it can also have a clip or mask applied, and pretty much any type of style property applied. So you really have no limits to what can be turned into a pattern. Then you go to Object, Pattern, Object to Pattern, and this will transform that object into a square with the pattern applied to it. The pattern is always a square. You can delete the object now, and it will be available as a pattern field for any other object that may need to use it. I like to think of this tool as a texture, in the sense of a 3D program where you add a texture to a polygon face. Just a couple of examples that comes to my mind right now would be bricks for a wall or a walkway, wood planks for anything built with planks, noise textures to add detail, things like that. In this particular example, I made a quick, somewhat detailed brick texture that I'm going to use to apply to make up a wall. And now I can play around with the shape of the wall, editing it in real time, and the fill will adapt to the area of the shape. Another interesting bonus of using this sort of fill is that you can have a library of possible textures that you can easily switch around. Like in this case, I'm turning this building from a brick one to a wood one in a matter of minutes, with the benefit of being able to play around with the scale and direction and location of the texture. This was one of the possible ways to use this feature. I'm sure you can think of a ton of them. I'll leave the experiment to you. Like I said before, that's always the fun part. By the way, if you want to be able to save patterns and use them without having to depend on a specific document, I will leave you in the description a link to a tutorial on how to do that. It's really not that complicated to do. Though it definitely shouldn't be as complicated as it is right now. Well, that was it for this tutorial. Hope you got some ideas or at least some inspiration out of it. Subscribe to the channel for more tutorials on Inkscape and Illustration, and don't forget to leave a like and a comment, it helps new users to discover this video and helps the channel enormously. That was it, see you in the next video, bye!